يا مركز النور فيك الإخاء وفيك المحبة فيك النقاء يا مركز النور فيك الإخاء وفيك المحبة فيك النقاء وفيك تجمع شمل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله all praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are in need. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. We seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ourselves, from our evil actions. And we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all help and support in our calamities, in our needs. Associating no partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the great action In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the action of, of tawbah Of repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide them And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he leads the astray Then no one from mankind can guide that person Without the permission and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear witness and testify that there is no law, there is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger sent to mankind. Are you who believe? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be feared. Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu attaqullah. Are you who believe? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be feared. And do not die only in a state of Islam, in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to what follows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human body. And with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this body to react in certain ways to certain things. For example, if someone steps on a nail or a pin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He causes the body to react in a way of what they call flight and response. You know, he jumps and he responds straight away to that pain. And this is something that the body can't control. It is something to do with his nature. That he reacts to certain things that is happening around him. When someone does something funny, you know, yani halal sort of uh, funniness. Someone, he cannot sometimes control himself. He smiles or he laughs or he giggles. Again, the body reacts to stimulus, to things around it. And these things, some of them can be controlled and some of them cannot. And uh, among the actions in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, that a person he does, which is a response to the body, is a response to the emotions of the heart, is when a person he cries and he weeps because of the love, because of the fear, because of the hope, because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see this to be one of the sunnahs of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In which himself, the example to mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would weep. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave this attribute of weeping for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not talking about people crying because they lost a love, they lost a girlfriend. This is a fake cry, this is a fake emotion. It has to be tied and connected with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a part hadith collected by At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the fire would not touch a man who weeps out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the person that he weeps out of the fear of Allah, the fire 
would not touch this type of person because this person proves something which is a great uh, initiative or a great action to have which is the fear of Allah to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all his actions to the point that his heart trembles and his eyes they tear out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect on the day of judgment a person and Allah will shade him on a day where there's no shade except the shade which is provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a certain type or certain group of people one of them being a person that remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret and he remembers the greatness of Allah and he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he weeps and he cries he cries over himself of his sins he cries and he tears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect this person the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he also mentioned that Tuba. Tuba is a tree in Jannah. And when the Prophet وسلم, he gives the glad tidings of the tree in Jannah, meaning he's giving the glad tidings of Jannah. For which type of person? For the one or anyone that controls his tongue, whose house is sufficient for him, and who weeps over his errors, over his mistakes. Because obviously, this person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in regards to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the sunnah of crying? Yes, there is a sunnah. There is a way that a person, if his eyes they tear out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a sunnah. There's a sunnah that should be implemented when someone he cries for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an example in everything even crying Allahu Akbar so Ibn al-Qayyim one of the great scholars of Islam he said that as for the weeping of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was the same degree as his laughing. So when the Prophet he laughed, he never made much noise or felt unconscious, Billah, because of lack of breath. Or he laughed so much that yani, he lost balance. Rather, when the Prophet he laughed, the whiteness of his teeth would, would be shown. Likewise, when the Prophet he cried, it was to the same degree. It wasn't something which is excessive or weeping. He wouldn't sob loudly, nor would he raise his voice. Just like his laughter wasn't loud. However, his eyes will fill up with tears until the tears would flow out. And you would hear like the whistling of a kettle coming from his chest. From the sadness you would hear like the whistling of a kettle you know when the kettle boils and whistles this would be heard from the chest of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would weep out of mercy for the dead out of fear and compassion for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of the deep fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His weeping would be out of fear. At the same time, he'll have khushu, subhanAllah. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Look at the times in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi used to cry. He used to cry out of the mercy for the dead. And out of the fear and compassion for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for his nation. He would cry. And as we're going to know later, that the Prophet ﷺ has one more other cry for this ummah. 
in which he would weep in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many Muslims are weeping for this ummah today? How many Muslims are crying for this nation today? How many people are weeping for their brothers and sisters? How many people are weeping just the current situation of this nation? This ummah, this nation, if a person does not find it distressing, does not find it a problem, does not find it depressing to see what the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, is going through, then unfortunately his heart is not working the right beats. It's not functioning properly. His heart is with the dunya. His heart is with this world. His heart is not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if it, is with, if it is with Allah, then it is with whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves which is the angels. And if it is with the angels, then it is with in which the angels they love and Allah loves, which is the Muslims, the believers on earth. So if his heart is not connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's not connected to the believers on this earth. To the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We said that the Prophet وسلم, would cry out of the mercy in regards to the dead. In a hadith collected by both Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Usama bin Zayd, عنه, he said, We were with Muhammad وسلم, where one of his daughters sent a messenger calling for him, informing him that her small child or son was dying. So this was the grandson of Muhammad sallallahu or granddaughter. In which the Prophet sallallahu he said, return to her and inform her that whatever Allah takes and gives, gifts belongs to him and that everything has an appointed term so let her be patient and appreciate Allah's reward in the hereafter later the messenger returned to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said verily she has sworn by Allah that you come so then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up and so did Sa'd ibn Ubaidah and Mu'ad radiyallahu an, they got up and they went with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Usama bin Zayd also went too. The small child was lifted up to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This young child was lifted up to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was groaning and was breathing its last breath. Upon that, the eyes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam flowed with tears. Upon this, they said, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? O Messenger of Allah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this is a mercy in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts into the heart of his servants. And verily, Allah shows mercy to those of his servants who are merciful. So here, the Prophet وسلم, his own blood, his grandson, is lying in his arms. And he's taking his last breath. And the Prophet وسلم, starts to cry. And so the companions, they ask Rasulullah, what is this? You're crying, Rasulullah. And then the Prophet وسلم, said that crying, this is a mercy. This is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it that a person, he sees a child dying and it does not get affected? This is only a mercy. It is a gift. It is a mercy from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he shows mercy to the one which are merciful or to the ones which have mercy. So it's only a proof 
that if a person he wants to know if the mercy of Allah is upon him, that he has to have this feel in his heart that is merciful to the believers. And this mercy, if a person he sees this happening in front of him and nothing is affected, then there is a problem in here. There is a problem with the heart. So the Prophet وسلم, he used to cry for the mercy of the dead. Because it is only the mercy in which Allah places into the heart of a believer which is coming out. And subhanAllah, the believer, the Muslim, he always has mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't show mercy to anyone that doesn't show the mercy to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person that doesn't show mercy to the creation of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have mercy on him. To show mercy to the believers, a person will have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would also cry when he remembered death. When he remembered death. In a hadith that's collected Bukhari and Ibn Majah and Ahmed and others, Al-Bara radiyallahu an, he said that while we were with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he suddenly looked towards a group of people and said, for what reason have these people gathered here? He was said in order to dig a grave so that may, they may bury someone. So the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he became alarmed and startled. And he quickly went ahead of his companions until the companions, they can no longer keep up with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when the companions, they reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they saw him that he had kneeled over the grave or went a sort of upon it. And the companions, they turned so they can see what was happening to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what he was doing. They saw that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was crying until the earth became wet with tears. So as they went to look to see what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing, leaning over this grave, they saw that there were tears were flowing from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the earth underneath Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was watery, was muddy, until a puddle had appeared from the tears of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Oh my brothers, prepare for a day like this. SubhanAllah. So short words. Oh my dear brothers, prepare for a day like this. The day in which you're going to enter the grave. The day in which you're going to have no helper. You know when we go on the internet, we're looking for a house. Honestly, what are we looking for? We go to a website and we type four lease, three bedroom house, uh, got to take air conditioning, got to take kitchen, gas, uh, tiles. And you start picking what you want in the house. Three bedroom, two, you know, three toilets. I don't want to share a toilet with anyone. You know, garage, double garage has to be double. One, two, three, four. You can even pick what area. You say, I want it in this area, in this street. And then you click search. And then a list of properties pop up. And then you scroll through and you start saying, mm, which one do I want? And you start comparing, comparing prices, seeing which one's better, which one's newer, which one's older. The reality of the situation is that our house doesn't come with air conditioning. Doesn't come with a car park or parking, or a garage, nor a kitchen, nor a bathroom. 
Nor is it three bedrooms. Our house is a six foot ditch with absolutely nothing in it. No wardrobe, no TV, no cable, no internet, nothing. So really the reality of our situation is that everyone's house is from which he came, which was the earth, the ground, from which we were created, we're going to return, in which we're going to be res resurrected from. Hallelujah. This is our life. We're in the womb. We start our life in the womb of our mother. This is our world. This is the world of the womb, the mother. Then we exit that world and then we come into this world that we are in today. And then once we die, we enter another womb. We enter another place of waiting, another place of sitting. You know, when you're, a baby's in the stomach, it's waiting. There's a period of waiting. It's the life of the world, life of the womb. And then we'll end up into the womb of the earth, which is the grave. The Barza. The interspace. The place between this world and the hereafter. And then just like we were born into this world, we will be born on the day of resurrection. Meaning, we would be resurrected. The same way when we were born, subhanAllah. No clothes, nothing. Uncircumcised. Popped up from the ground. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would resurrect every creation. Would resurrect every man, every woman, every child. They'll be resurrected. And they are born into the day of judgment. Meaning, they'll come on the day of judgment. In the same state that they were born. Barefoot, with no clothes at all. And then from there, there's only two destinations. Paradise and hellfire. But the reality of the situation, that if you were to say to yourself every single morning you wake up, and you were to say, by the next morning I'm going to die. Every morning you say to yourself, by the next time, this time, at this day, the next day, I'm going to die. Do you know one day you, you'll be right? That's a scary thing about it. One day, if you say, every day of your life, I'm going to die today, Allah A'la, one day you're going to be right. Because verily one day you're going to perish. You're going to die. You're not going to have anything left. Everything will leave you. You would leave everything. And you will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only with your deeds, only with your actions. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given some of that knowledge of the unseen, of what happens to the person when he dies and it was related to us. So subhanallah, look at the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh brothers, prepare, prepare for a day like this. The key word in this statement is prepare. A school teacher, it's actually a business studies teacher, used to say to me every week at least once, or twice. Those that fail to prepare, they fail to prepare, they're preparing to fail. What a beautiful statement. Those, and you should tell us all this time, and if you don't prepare for your exam, then prepare to fail the exam. And if those that fail to prepare, they're not preparing themselves, then they're just preparing themselves to fail. And that's so true. If a person doesn't prepare himself in this world, then he's going to fail when he dies at that state. Do you know what's the most amazing thing? And I was going through this today. The scholars, according to evidences, 
from the Quran and Sunnah. They say that if someone he dies on the battlefield, you can't refer to him as Shaheed. And we've all heard, we have all heard this before. Why? It's because Shaheed means that that person enters Jannah. And even though by the eye it might appear that that person is a Muslim, no one knows what's in the heart of that person. So rather, say, may Allah accept him from the shuhada. Or you can't say that that person is going to die as a Muslim. Or you can't say to that person, he's going to get paralyzed. Because you don't know what state that person will die in, subhanAllah. He might die in hypocrisy. He might die on kufr. He might have left Islam. Likewise, a kafir, a disbeliever, you see him, yes, you say generally yes, the disbelievers are in hellfire. But you don't say, you know this guy, Mark, that guy there, he's going to hell. Why? What happens if Mark becomes a Muslim tomorrow? Are you approving your approvals over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For verity is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that decides where his final destination would be. If he dies as a non-Muslim, obviously that is a different story. But we're talking about someone that's alive. Why? It's because you're judged at the time of your death. If you have done good your whole life and at the time of your death you've committed shirk, then you have died other than the state of Islam. And this leads a person to the hellfire because he's not a Muslim. However, a person might be a disbeliever his whole life. But he might take jihada and get hit by a car the next day. And inshallah, he enters Jannah. Why? It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one that changes the hearts. Not the human. You can work, subhanAllah, how many times you give da'wah to someone and you try to show him everything and nothing changes. And subhanAllah, you meet one person, you tell him one story about Islam and he becomes a Muslim. Or he sees someone praying. He doesn't even hear Islam. He just sees a Muslim praying and he becomes a Muslim. Why? Because the heart is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is between a man and his heart. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he controls the heart. Another time in which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cried, and this has a beautiful lesson in it. And it is, as we know, it is the famous hadith, the famous story about the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibrahim. Which, according to some of the scholars, that he could have been about a year and a half old. So his son Ibrahim, Anasi reports, and this is in uh, Bukhari, he says that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to his son Ibrahim when he was breathing his last breath. And the eyes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to shed tears. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf radiyallahu anhu he said, O Messenger of Allah, you also cry, you also weep. He, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Abdul Rahman that it is a mercy. It is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he began to weep, to weep. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and we want to concentrate on this statement because we want to learn from these occurrences and these scenarios. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the eyes are shedding tears and the heart is grieved and we will not say except what pleases our Rabb, what pleases, uh, pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Ibrahim, indeed we are grieved by your departure. 
Look at this statement by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the time of his son dying, he's giving da'wah to us. <coughs> at the time that his son Ibrahim is dying, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving da'wah to the companions, thus extension to us. What was the beautiful statement? And the Prophet ﷺ is weeping. Some people are crying, you can't even talk to them. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, obviously our heart is grieved, and we will not say except what only pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning in certain situations or scenarios, you find people that say things that displeases Allah. Something happens, why Allah, why? Why me? How can it happen to me? Or something occurs and he gets upset and he gets cut about it. Or something happens in the religious side of things and he disagrees with the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that time of emotion and stress. Yani many times someone is angry and he's having a fight with his wife. We say to him, Habibi, relax, calm down. You know, time for duhr. Relax, take it easy. Let's pray the heart together. No, I'm not going to pray. I don't want to pray. Leave me alone. SubhanAllah. In this time of distress and anger or sadness, what's wrong with people? Only say that which pleases Allah. Or someone who loses a loved one, and you come to him, you say to him, listen, it's time for salah. Come and pray. I haven't got time for prayer now. SubhanAllah. What do you mean you haven't got time for prayer? Only, we only say that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We won't say anything else. The son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dying. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, we will not say anything, only that which pleases Allah. And this is a lesson. That any calamity, any problem, any situation, don't say anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even a personal experience that someone was bitten by a mosquito started to swear at the creation of Allah because they got bitten by a mosquito. This is called kufri. This is a statement of kufr. And if not, it has led someone outside the fold of Islam. Why? It's because he cursed the creation of Allah. He actually cursed as a, a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani a person, he enters kufr because of anger and distress. So sometimes when someone is angry or someone's distressed or someone's upset or someone's emotional or someone's cut or whatever it may be, the best practice that someone can implement is to stay silent. How many words of evil and corruption are said in marriage arguments? The husband and wife are arguing and they're saying things that a sane person would never say. Cursing one another, cursing family members, cursing people that have absolutely nothing to do with the family or nothing to do with the situation. SubhanAllah. Cursing the kids. Cursing everything. What's going on? Say that which only pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're talking so much that you don't know what you're saying. Because you will be held accountable. The only time that a person is not held accountable for what he says is when he's in complete insanity. And most of that time you say to the person, what did you say? And he doesn't know what happened. Complete insanity? Yes, he's not held accountable. But crazy, angry person, yes, he is held accountable for what he says. So only say that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at the end of the day, in every calamity, every problem, every situation, every trial, every tribulation, every issue, every hardship, who do you want on your side? Who do you want help from? Who do you want support from? Who's your protector? Who's the one looking out for you? Who is your wali? Who is the one that takes you out of darkness into light?
Who do you need on your side? You need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need Allah. You need your creator. You need the one that understands you. You need the one that fashioned you. And you need the one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only one that can help you. Know that no one can help you. If someone does help you, know that help is not from him. But it's because Allah has given him the permission to help you. Subhanallah. So everything at the end of the day, our will, our decision is within the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another time in which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would cry. And we said, we'll leave this to the end. There are other stories, but we don't have the time really to go through everyone. That on the day of judgment, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is in Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about Ibrahim alayhi salam who said, O oh my Rabb, they have led me astray among mankind. They have, often, they have led many astray from mankind. But whosoever follows me, he verily is of me. This is the supplication of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And those of Isa alayhi salam, who Isa, he said, if you punish them, they are your slaves. And if you forgive them, then verily you are Allah, you are the Almighty and the All-Wise. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised up his hands and said, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah, my nation, my nation, and wept. This is on the Day of Judgment. This is when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is interceding on our behalf. Saying, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, Ya Allah, my nation, my Ummah, my Ummah. And the Prophet وسلم, would cry. Now listen to what the previous Prophets they said. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, O oh Rabb, they have led astray many of mankind from his nation. But whoever follows me, then he is of me. That's one Supplication. Isa alayhi salam, he said, if you punish them, they are your slaves. And if you forgive them, verily, you are the only one, the Almighty, the All Wise. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's plea was different. He said, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. And he started to weep. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Jibreel alayhi salam, O oh Jibreel, Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask him, What makes you weep? What makes you cry? Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is crying. So Jibreel alayhi salam came and he asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the reason in which he is crying. And then the Messenger of Allah informed him what he had said. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew. Upon this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Jibreel, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Verily, we will please you with regards to your ummah and we will never displease you. Who is the, who is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam worrying about? On the day of judgment. Who is he crying to? He's crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whom? His nation. His ummah. Us. As human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We will please you in regards to your ummah and will never displease you. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning what you ask about your nation would accept. Would accept your intercession. Subhanallah. On behalf of your ummah. This nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ones that came before us. 
They were worried about the nations that came before them. They were worried. This, the companions, were worried about us today. We're worried about our brothers and sisters in Syria. We're worried about the Muslims all over the world from their time until now. And we keep worrying, and they had worry from now until the day of judgment. Why? Because everything they did, they tried their utmost effort. They risked their lives. They risked everything that they had so that this ummah that is now has the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And most important, has the knowledge of what to do in the times of fitnah. In the times of fitna. What to do? What is the solution? And the signs of the minor and major hour. And how to run this ummah. How to run this nation. You know that if you have a teacher and after he dies, the students, they say, stuff this, we, we, we're not going to have nothing to do with this person. Do you know that his teaching stopped? No one would ever hear about him. But the companions, being the student of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never said to themselves, you know what, let's sit back and relax. No. Now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, now we spread. Now we go even further. Now we keep pushing. Why? Because they knew that there are going to be a nation that's going to come after. They knew about the nation in which is going to fight the Dajjal and Isa is going to be with them. And the Mahdi is going to be there. They knew. And they knew that they had to prepare themselves and the foundation for the nations that come after. SubhanAllah. Imagine that. Their hum, their concern was us. We were the concern. We were the worry. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave ease to the companions. When there were verses that were revealed in regards that there will be people that will have similar attributes to them. This would have put them a, a bit of ease that their efforts are not going to go to waste. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ ثُلَّةٌ مِّنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنَ الْآخِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the forerunners. What are the forerunners? The ones which are ahead in everything. The ones which are first in everything. Meaning the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those like them. They are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a blessed jannah. Many of these people, these type of people, would be from the early generation. From the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَقَالِيلٌ مِّنَ الْآخِرِينَ And a few of them would be from when? Would be from the later generation. Would be from the last of generations. This would make them feel comfort that, you know what? Later, yes, they're going to come people which are going to uphold this deen and uphold this religion and uphold this ummah. But we need to push forward. We need to sacrifice our, our life, even at times their blood, for this ummah. When you travel through the Middle East, even abroad, North Africa, Yemen, and he, even towards China, you find that the companions of Muhammad وسلم, are buried throughout the world because they spread. This was their concern. And this was the deep concern of Muhammad. Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. What a beautiful thing it would be to hold hands and to be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a beautiful thing. Well, the Muslims have never ever seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they're willing to give their lives for the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a beautiful thing. 
as we've learned that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy and was a mercy to mankind. And you would never see, you would never, ever, ever, ever see these modern day corrupt leaders, rulers, whatever you want to call them, ever shed one tear for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or even the concept of mercy to mankind, they'll never shed one tear. Amazing. They'll never shed one tear for mercy. But for a dog, or a whale, or a panda bear, they would have tears. Where is the mercy? Where is the mercy to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is the mercy to the believers? Do you know there are people which donate millions of dollars a year to protect a bear, a panda bear? There's actually a campaign out there to take pigs away from captivity. So keep pigs are not kept in cages. And they show like a pig being oppressed in a cage and how sad it is and donate now one dollar a day or monthly or whatever. And we laugh, but do you know how many people sign up to this program? A pig is worth more than the blood of a Muslim or the captivity of a Muslim. SubhanAllah. And why do we say this? Because some Muslims, they are fooled into this. To think that they're actually doing something. Where is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is the mercy to the believers? Because indeed, if a person, to similar to what? I mean, not remembering the hadith word by word. The hadith of Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam that if a person he goes to sleep without having concern of this ummah, he has lackness of belief. There's something not right in his belief. He has some yani, hypocrisy there or jahiliyyah there. He's not really 100%. That a person he goes to sleep at night and he doesn't have any harm, he doesn't have any concern for this nation. The nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, just want to mention the reasons in which the Prophet وسلم, he cried, in which we have mentioned yani, first of the yani, part of the lecture that the Muhammad وسلم, would weep out of the mercy for the dead, out of the fear and compassion for this ummah, out of the deep fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of listening to the Quran, to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously out of fear, but at the same time you actually have khushu. It's not transforming crying to be an act of worship, subhanAllah. Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our hearts in mercy and to bring us closer to the way and actions and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.